Hey, my beautiful, my friend, how are you? I'm glad that you're here. This is our third message of the all new series. If you haven't seen the others, no problem, but watch it. It's going to be good for you. I just want to ask you a favor before you listen to this message, today's message. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, subscribe. It's quick. You click and subscribe, hit the bell, and every Monday there will be a message for you here. Do this, make it as a habit for your life, for your personal edification, you know, as a habit for you to have a devotional life. Every day watch a message. It'll be good for you. And if you haven't liked the video yet, do it. There is a, a place here, a like button. You click, it makes the video go even further, more people watch and be blessed just like you are right now. Let's go to the Word. Psalms 51 verse 10 says this, Give me a pure heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast out of your presence, and do not withdraw your spirit from me. You know, it's the king of Israel, David, claiming to the Lord, in other words, saying, take everything from me. You can take everything. Just don't take your spirit from me. You know, it's, it's, it's David saying, don't leave me empty again, as I was. For you to understand, this is a scene where David had just been severely corrected by a prophet named Nathan. David had sinned against God, had fallen into sin with a woman named Bathsheba. And the Bible says that Nathan admonished him, put the truth to him. And he was in shock because he found himself dirty. And when he found himself unclean, he said, God, please put in me a heart that's pure, upright. And please don't take your spirit from me. Don't take your spirit from me because I don't know how to live away from your presence. You know, you know what? I know a lot of people today, a lot of people. The life, the life that God gave us, gave us the opportunity and the privilege to know people from all places of society, from the richest to the poorest. And you know what's funny because this empty feeling is not for those who have a lot or those who have a little. It's a feeling shared between the rich and the miserable. Every human being has exactly this inside, an emptiness. No one is exempt from having this feeling. I know people who are millionaires, maybe even billionaires, who say, oh my God, I don't know, but it seems that something is missing. And you see there are Ferraris, airplanes, big houses, women, and everything. There's everything. He has everything that someone can say is good. But he still says when he puts his head on the pillow, something missing and every week he tries to buy something to try and suffocate this feeling every week he's seen something new to buy so finally he'll go home now it's over he takes a long vacation good now it's over inside of me and when vacation is over when drinking is over when money is gone the results come back again in the same emptiness one day when I can buy that beautiful house I've dreamed of with the backyard and the lake condominium and the car in the garage, I'll be happy and complete. And the day is here. House, car, everything. Shh. But something's still missing. Then the poor guy who lives in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the world says, the day that I can buy a hammock, good to sleep, then I'll be happy. 
So he bought the hammock and went and extended and laid down and put her hand on the chest and says, it's still missing something. Then he saw a little boat going through the river and says, that boat, if I'm able to have, it's done. And he bought the boat. And when he was inside the boat rowing, he put his hand on his chest and said, something is still missing. Something is missing. And the world lives after this something. And people go around and round after this something. They're never happy, they're never satisfied, never complete. There's always something missing inside, not inside the house, not inside the garage, not inside the bank account. It's inside himself. You know what's the problem? It's that we always think that our deficiency, our lack is in something outside our heart. But men's greatest need is inside his heart. I'll tell you a story which is the logic of every purpose and salvation of project of Jesus. We're without Jesus, spiritually dead. Within us and in our spirits, when it doesn't have Jesus, is dead. So we have reasons, emotions, everything may be up to date, but our spirit is dead. Dead. And that's the emptiness. And it's because there is a graveyard inside us. And as long as we don't face the Creator, we're cosmic orphans of all history. As long as we don't clash face to face with the Creator, we're a branch fallen on the ground that is not grafted to the vine. It looks good, it looks beautiful, but there's no sap flowing from inside, so it doesn't bear fruit. But you know, my greatest difficulty as an evangelist is not to talk about what fills the space. It's to convince the man who is empty. And my greatest challenge is not to tell you Jesus fills the space in your soul. No, it's telling you that inside of you there is an emptiness. And that emptiness, I know someone who can fill up. <laughs> oh, my Jesus, I want to tell you, my beautiful, in the middle of the day, in a recording at night, exactly what's happening right now. Do you know what it is? Boom. You just bumped into the Creator. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I'll explain better. I feel like enough, but I can't because there's a recording. Oh my gosh. You listen once a week to a message. Right? Mm hmm Yeah, you do. You listen. You listen when you're sick, right? Yeah. But when you're good, you don't, right? Because then you don't need it. I know. I know you. I help a lot of people like this. There are people that only come to me when life is bad. When they're all well, they forget. I wish you would call me when it's a good day so we can eat something and do something. But when everything is falling apart, oh, pastor, help me. But then everything gets better and forget about us. But it's okay. It's no problem. You watch the video once a week, and when you watch, what do you feel? Oh, that's good. Oh, I feel such a good energy when I listen to this boy. <laughs> I'm not from the city powerhouse. And my power is Celesque. I'm not from Celesque. I don't sell energy, but it's okay. You can call it however you want. I think it's cute. It's a good energy, good energy. I'm not an energy drink. It's all good. It's cute. 
I, 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 even sometimes I say, look, what a good energy. Then I, how, how cool I am. I'm talking about energy. But look here. You felt it, right? You felt it. But then as soon as it appears, right? It does. But it's because we... How can I explain this so you never forget it? We can't live with Jesus on dates. We can't live with Jesus on bad days. Jesus is help. He's help. He's refuge. He is refuge. But Jesus is also a home permanent. Only if I tell you the opposite, now you go crazy. You know who is a permanent house? Jesus is? You. You know where Jesus wants to live? I'm preaching like a little children is listening to me right now. You know where Father in Heaven wants to live? You know. Right in that empty area of your heart. Right in the empty area of your spirit. Exactly where you can't justify. Because having everything, I like something. Exactly in that place is where he wants to make his dwelling. Only the Bible says that he does not invade empty places. Every day when you watch a video is when God tells someone to speak something to you, someone comes and I speak a word. You feel a presence, but you don't open the door. But the Bible says, I stand at the door and knock, and whoever opens the door, I will come and make my home. is exactly this right here it is not a search for 15 minutes it's a lifetime to be able to talk to you for 15 minutes he is at the door and knocks whoever opens the door the Lord will come in and make his dwelling forever wherever you are right now this will become, become a habit. You who are here, my beautiful, and who never opened the door of your heart, who are always visited but never made a permanent home. If you want to live this, if you want the Lord to dwell in your heart, how did I not know this? It's simple. How can you? It's simple. You want the Lord to meet you? Stop running away. Open the door and let him dwell inside you. And you will experience the most extraordinary change in the world. A change from the inside out. A spirit that is alive, that was dead and now is alive. I am the true olive tree. Jesus is the true olive tree. And we are the branches grafted into the olive tree. We choose to either live in him or without him. David said, take away everything. Just don't take away your presence from me. Because the best thing in my life is not the kingdom. It's not the crown. It is the spirit within me. Can I tell you something? Today I have a wonderful house. I live in a nice house in a good apartment in my city. I drive in a nice car. I like cars, God forbid. And I could fulfill a dream of a car that I always wanted. Nice, I love that car. 
I get in it, turn it on. I'm like, oh, beautiful. Look nice. I have a quiet life today thanks to Jesus. But you know what's funny? There was a time that I didn't have any of this. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a house. I lived in a studio apartment. I used to ride a bus, and I had trouble eating in college because I didn't have money. But you know what's funny? The same amount that I was happy back then <laughs> is the same amount that I am happy right now. And I can't explain to you, but I can have the same happiness today, the same happiness I had back then when I was paying 320 and ran afraid of the man would raise 10 bucks and I couldn't afford it anymore. Because the secret of our life and happiness is not what's the outside. It's what's inside. Jesus. There are people that are making decision here tonight. There are people watching this message right now on the internet. And they're saying in tears right now, Lord. I want to open the door of my heart. <laughs> and this is what we call the phenomenon of salvation. A new life. Everything new, Father. Jesus, change the story of your children. The spirit that was dead comes alive. A new house. In Jesus' name.